as mentioned, my name is Sebastian Puerta. Uh, I'm a recent pre-doctoral fellow at Opportunity Insights at Harvard University. I was mentored by Professor David Deming, also at Harvard University. So today I have the pleasure of talking to you about my project, uh, which studies the effects of college in-state tuition policies on the edu educational attainment of undocumented students. So a little bit of the context and what the problem here uh, th that we see. So in 2009, there's an estimated 12 million undocumented immigrants living in the United States. States. This is actually a substantial portion of school age children and, and minors and uh, people that are college going age as well. And, and this, this number is increasing uh, over time as well. Um, however, uh, among these undocumented immigrants that are college going age, ages 18 through 24, 40% did not complete high school um, compared to 8% of US born residents. And among those that did graduate high school, uh, only 70, uh, only about half went to college compared to 71% of US born residents. Uh, that data was, was calculated, I believe in 2017 as well. So uh, there, there's obvious disparities. One and two, this is a, a sizable portion uh, of our school going population. So it shows that this is important and, and there's a problem to be solved here. And so how am I gonna go about um, investigating this problem and seeing what if what are some potential policies that go, go about solving this problem. So what I do is, is estimate the effects of these policies known as college in-state tuition policies, which allow undocumented students in a particular state to pay in-state tuition there, uh, as opposed to out-of-state tuition. So my hypothesis here is that there'll be large positive effects of these policies on the college attendance rates for college age, Mexican likely undocumented immigrants. So to do so, I'm going to be leveraging a difference in difference approach and to estimate the effect of these policies and, and utilizing the staggered implementation of these policies at the state level over time. And there, are, there are about 24 states or university board of regions that have adopted these policies since 2000. So that's the variation that I'm going to be using here. Uh, and another clarification is that I'm going to be using U.S. citizenship as a proxy for undocumented status because in most publicly available data, you do not see whether someone is directly undocumented. So I proxy for that by seeing whether or not they are a citizen or not. And then to further increase my accuracy, I'm going to restrict the sample to populations that have a high proportion of un undocumented immigrants, i.e. those of Mexican nationality. So the data that I use actually comes from three different sources. And I think this is actually where um, uh, the, uh, the competitive advantage of my project um, and, and what it adds to this literature on the effect of college and state tuition policies. So I use three different data sources, two of which are micro data. And the third is actually at the college level. So I use uh, two survey uh, survey data sets, the 2000 to 2018 ACS, American Community Survey, and 1997 to 2018 CPS, Current Population Survey, and 1998 through 2018 IPEDS. Um, so with this, I actually have regressions at two different levels, the individual level and the college level. I've included the specification that I run uh, below. This is for the individual level, but it's uh, the college level specification is analogous. So. You can see here, I have my outcome. Um, in most cases, it is just college attendance for an individual I in state S at time T. I have some state fixed effects, some time fixed effects. Uh, I, most of my specifications that I show are event study. So I've modeled my specification after that. Um, and so most importantly, what, what you care about is that beta L, um, when L is equal to zero, the, uh, the way I've set it up is that the policy takes place in year zero um, with the effects relative to the year before, year minus one. So that's, that's the year that I've left out. I've added a whole battery of individual controls in XI there, um, and I've added various time varying um, and permanent state uh, controls in the Q variable there. So what do I see quickly summarizing uh, the estimates that I find that there's actually about a seven percentage point increase. So that's a 40% increase over the mean in the college attendance rate of non-US citizen Mexican immigrants ages 19 through 22 in the individual level data. 
In the college level data, I see actually about a 20 to 40% increase in attendance uh, for non-resident students. And uh, most importantly, I conducted placebo tests and I found that there's no significant effect for US citizen Mexican immigrants. So to show you a few of the plots, so this is the event study plot that I made using the ACS survey data. So this is individual data. So at year zero, that is when the policy is put into place. And you can see a couple of years after that, that uh, there is an effect that I uh, estimate there uh, and it hovers around uh, seven percentage points. A couple things to note in this figure, however, is that there is one year of significant uh, where there's a significant pre-trend. So this chart in particular is probably at most suggestive evidence because the significant pre-trend um, could be a sign of, of potential endogeneity concerns. Another thing is uh, I've added the diff and diff coefficient to this chart um, and you can see that it is, it is very close to zero and it's insignificant um, you can't reject zero. And so I think that highlights the importance of using a uh, a dynamic specification event study specification in this case, because if not, you would estimate that there was no effect of these policies. And that is not the case. Um, if you have a large enough panel and you go over across time far enough, you'll see that there is an effect. It just takes about five years to kick in, in using this data. Here is a chart showing the effect at the college level using the iPads data. So here you see uh, a very stark trend. Um, it increases actually very uh, immediately after the uh, passage of this policy, and it hovers at around a 40% increase. The, the outcome here is log attendance of non-residents. So this is percentage, um, not percentage points. So this is the same story, um, and this just adds to the evidence. Um, to add, uh, I also, ran the chart using the CPS data and you see again a similar story, but I omitted that for time. And lastly, here is the chart using individual level data um, where I conduct a placebo test and you see that there is no effect for uh, US uh, citizen Mexican immigrants. So that, that uh, adds to the evidence that this uh, policy had a large effect on the population of interest. So uh, non-citizen likely undocumented immigrants. Uh, here are the very lengthy list of my sources. Thank you very much for your time. I apologize if I went a little bit over, uh, but thank you again.